Hey everybody, Jesse Reed here with Jumper Entertainment. I'm here tonight with Wayward Saints. How are you guys doing? Great, Great. Great. awesome. Amazing. Awesome. You guys mind introducing yourself first? My name is Darren Flower. I play guitar in Wayward Saints. My name is Justin. I play guitar. Lindsay, singer. Aaron, drummer. Bill, the bassist. Awesome. Now you guys came together just before the pandemic. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about how you guys did all come together, the five of you? Well, a couple years ago, Justin um, friend requested me. I guess he saw that I was posting about cool like 70s rock bands on Facebook, and yeah, he befriended me. And one day we actually met up. We live in the same city of Mississauga. We decided that we liked each other and we wanted to form a band. So then we went looking for band members, and it was kind of difficult because there's a lot of great musicians out there, but you got to find the right people who really understand and appreciate the style of music, right? So it took a while to find everybody. We had uh, some great musicians come out, but they weren't um, quite what we were looking for. And well, then we kind of put it all together around 2019. It took a while, but we did it. <laughs> That's so important in a band to have all of the musicians gel with each other. Can you explain that at all? What is that energy just certain bands have when they come together? Yeah, I'll take that. I'm, one of the things that I'm extremely grateful for with this band in particular is everybody's actually a really genuinely lovely person. And having been in tons of bands in the past, you know, I think I speak for probably a lot of musicians out there that there's usually one or two bad apples they've had to deal with in a rotation of trying to make a band work. Yeah. And, you know, it can be stressful. It, it inhibits creativity, um, morale, the whole bit. And uh, I, in fact, I, I was telling these guys, you know, uh, tonight and, and just reminding them, I thought these guys were putting me on because they were really nice. I thought <laughs> that this, this can't be real, like, because I was so used to having, you know, a bit of ego, a little yeah. bit of drama. Yeah. And that's just not in this band. Um, you know, I mean, if, if there's a disagreement of any kind, we, we work through it, we, we get through it. I mean, that's normal, we're human, but I mean, everybody's just really lovely. And um, that's, to me, like the secret sauce of this band, for sure. Great answer. Yeah. Um, I'm going to ask you about your guys' sound in just a second here, but first, can we go through, can you guys tell me what you, some of your own personal influences are? Okay, well, um, I would say my four horsemen of classic rock that I really <laughs> care about is uh, Led Zeppelin, of course. Uh, I really am into the Allman Brothers band, Johnny Edgar Winter, and Humble Pie. Um, that's my four horsemen right there. But that, you know, I also like Grand Funk Railroad and Dr. John and Marshall Tucker Band. And oh, there's a lot of great stuff. Aerosmith. That's <clears throat> way more than four. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't count. I'm sorry. I mean, I'd say for me, I, I grew up on the classics. Uh, Angus Young from ACDC is probably one of the reasons why I picked up a guitar in the first place at such a young age. Um, and then it just sort of went from there. Uh, lots of bands that I grew up listening to, like uh, Guns N' Roses, Deep Purple, Led Zeppelin, Black Sabbath. Uh, sort of uh, transpired from there to more progressive rock bands like Yes, Genesis, King Crimson, and then uh, the the time I heard for the first time hearing Clarence White play, and that sort of just changed the game for me because I realized that there's a lot more going on with uh, less notes and you don't need to play as fast and it's it's more about the melody that's coming back to you as opposed to being flashy and things like that. So yeah, that definitely uh, has affected my playing for the better. I hope. Yeah. Well, it's such a loaded question. It is, it is. I'm sorry, and I'm giving it to you guys right off the top. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's totally fair. I'm Where's just, the standard boilerplate stuff? Right? <laughs> I'm, I'm listening to these guys and I'm going, oh, how am I going to answer that? So, okay, I don't know. I grew up uh, primarily, you know, uh, learning how to sing with like bluegrass and folk and country. So it was pretty natural for my parents and family and people around me to also like Southern rock, you know, and so Southern rock kind of was my first, you know, entry into classic rock, if you will. And it wasn't until I was sort of in my 20s that I started realizing there's this whole other world of, you know, of classic rock, you know. I mean, sure, you hear about it, but I mean, I was a kid in the 80s, so I listened to really terrible 80s music. Not the, re <laughs> not the really good stuff, like not the new wave stuff, like, you know, bad, bad 80s. Um, my sister's six years older, so I had to really suffer a lot of Bon Jovi. Not that Bon Jovi's bad, just... <laughs> you know? And so all of a sudden in my 20s, everybody was getting rid of CDs and all of a sudden vinyl was just for free or next you know, to nothing. And I could get all these classic rock albums 
well, people wanted to buy CDs for $25 for the best of the Doors and I could get all the Doors albums for a dollar a piece, yeah. you know? So uh, that just like was my education on my own. So I would say, you know, the Doors definitely early stuff. Um, a Steppenwolf is pretty big for me. Um, ACDC, of course, Bon Scott mostly. Um, Led Zeppelin, of course. I would say those are, those are my early guys and I, I can't not make them still at, at the core of it. But yeah. yeah, Southern Rock in general, I mean, you name it, I'm into it. So. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, for me, I think, uh, you know, as a kid, when I first started like listening to music and my parents got me like a tiny little like Sony like boomboxy thing that I could listen to in my basement, uh, I found these tapes and they were like 60s tapes. Right, so like uh, like Chuck Berry and like you know, and then I found like my uh, my dad had these old cassettes of like um, the Ink Spots and like all these like really old you know artists, right? And um, so I started I started listening to that and I was like, wow, this is really great. But then I got my first set of drums at 13, and you know at that time you know it was Offspring, like I I, I had Smash, I had Dookie, I had like all these like you know current bands, right? Um, at that time and then you know my dad was like here you got to listen to this stuff and then he started like really showing me like yeah like Zeppelin, Pink Floyd, Sabbath, um, Humble Pie, um, you know Steppenwolf, Guess Who and I'm just like like listening to it musically like obviously I was like wow like learning to play drums and wanting to play like these drummers but like just listening to the music itself I think uh, you know for me as an artist I try to listen to everything like I'm not just listening to like what are the drums doing? What's the bass doing? What's the guitar doing? You know, what's the lead singer doing? Like when you kind of look at it as a whole, right? You kind of, right, exactly. Right? You don't you don't compartmentalize it, right? You look at it as a whole. You're like, wow, like these guys were like good because they were so tasteful, right? Like they added such a, a unique thing. So that was kind of like for me. That's when I was like, I don't just want to be like a smash and bash guy and like playing solos and killing everything and. You know, that's fun. That's really fun. You want but, the Right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Like, you know, it's, it's about, like, you know, being in the pocket, as we always say, and, like, you know, playing the song and, and uh, you know, knowing, picking your spots, right? I mean, that's what I learned from listening to a lot of, like, the greats, right, as, you know, as we, as we call them. So that was my influences, I guess, as a musician. So take it away. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up in Brazil. Um... So my dad was crazy about uh, classic rock, like uh, Led Zeppelin. And well, I started playing guitar because like Star Way to Heaven. Like, what is this riff? I gotta learn that. And like, we had a guitar. <laughs> my dad had like a guitar, one of those Spanish guitars. The the headstock was uh, broken. We glue and we put the strings. <laughs> and like, a, I had to learn the riff, right? And my mom was all into. Um, uh, the Brazilian stuff, uh, more the country Brazilian, uh, uh, popular music, uh, popular from there. Uh, so uh, yeah, I have the uh, North American or, uh, or, or English side and I have the Brazilian. Uh, I grew up playing guitar. Um, I came to Canada, I didn't play bass before, guys. <laughs> I started playing bass in my 20s. Are, are you just talking about now in this interview? Or? You heard it here first. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's Holy. true, I'm like a sort of a late bloomer with a, with a bass. Yeah, yeah. It's just a panic attack it's just, right now. It's just a demand, you know? I would have never known. Yeah, yeah, it's like, just a demand, right? Like, you're gonna need a... Say you don't need a bass, just if you scream there, someone's going, hey, bass. <laughs> So I started playing projects and I learned, like, I was always attached to the, um, to the low end of the strings, right? I have, like, heroes uh, like Jaco, uh, Victor Wooten, uh, James, James Jamerson, like, these guys old school, like, they're so good. And, like, if you listen to those lines, like, so much, you know, it's like, and, uh, yeah, that's how it came, like, a mix of, like, all kinds of music, I guess. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, so yeah, we just uh, we just went through a pretty extensive list of artists here. Yeah. Let's uh, let's talk about how you guys tie all of those things in together to make the sound that you're making. Well, I know when I write riffs, I, I grew up with a lot of metal as well too. And the thing with metal is, um, you know, having the heroes like Dimebag Daryl from Pantera or Dave Mustaine from Megadeth, they have a lot of what I would call signature riffs. Mm -hmm. These riffs are like very standout, and they are they're not just like ban na na na. And, and like those are cool too, but they go what I think above and beyond. So I always try to keep that in mind, and um, you know, when writing a riff, I try to think, is this you know above and beyond what I think is maybe status quo? 
I don't know if I ever achieved that, but um, I always try to you know keep the, those in mind, like you know, when I'm trying to like write stuff. As well. I think we write awesome. uh, well together. Like when we're in the same room, we have a good understanding and a good communication. Like we we're at sim a similar level of like a yeah. musicianship and. A, yeah. Uh, the way we feel and understand music and that makes it really helpful for us to craft the songs. Yeah, it's a, it, it's very easy. Uh, it's probably been the easiest it's ever been, you know, for me. Um, mind you, I'm only singing in the band, um, but, you know, I do, I do play guitar and stuff, so, you know, um, and it's, it's kind of cool. Like, I, I just, you know, we, we, an idea comes to the table and it's easy for me to say, hey, have we, you know, like, uh, just the other night, I said, Darren, I know you wrote that as an intro, but I'm actually singing verse stuff over it. So we need to take that intro and turn it into a verse. Like, he goes, wait a minute, but that's the intro. I'm like, I know, but trust me. And he does trust me. And I think that's the okay. point is that we trust each other. Like we say things that, that may not be comfortable, but we trust that, you know, every idea gets tried. Oh, and I think if every idea gets tried, it's fine if it takes a little bit longer, but everybody feels like they had a hand in the decision. So. I think, I don't know if that helps answer this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that's We good. just went around the table uh, with our influences, and I'm sure there was a lot of similarities here. So, I mean, like, I think that sort of helps totally. the melting pot where we all kind of know where each other's coming from, yeah. and we just want to sort of make the best, but we have a very uh, unified direction of how we want the music to sound, so we just bring all of our very similar interests to the table and, you know, do the best we can. Awesome. Uh, so you guys got, uh, you got the one track release at this point in the wild. <laughs> Amazing classic rock sound to it. I love, I love the tone. It's a, uh, yeah, beautifully layered track. Can we talk about that a little bit? Thank you. I like to write riffs, and um, I kind of have this problem where I don't really personally like to do a lot of covers. Um, I entertain myself by writing riffs to, you know, just for me. And so, when the, in the infancy stages of this band, I, I, I and, and trying to find uh, players and whatever, I was just like, well, I guess I'm gonna need some songs, won't I? So I started jamming out the riff and taking some time to piece. Uh, some things together, and it was just adrenaline, it, you know. Um, and a lot of people compare it to, uh, I guess, ACDC. We get a lot of uh, ACDC comparisons, which is, uh, I, I like the band and I respect them a lot. Yeah. It's not necessarily my cup of tea, but that's what I find uh, interesting because of the ACDC comparison. And I was actually going for um, Hubble Pie and Rick Derringer, rock and roll Hoochie Coo fame, yeah. and kind of keep those two people in mind, and nobody catches that. But <laughs> 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 well, we still love them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You I love their guitar playing too. Sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm okay. Sure. Thank, well, thank you. Yeah. As you say. And I mean, I, I definitely noticed when uh, when we started really working out the full song, uh, the the part that I brought to the table, I did not know that I was bringing a very ACDCS part to the table. And then listening back, it made a lot of sense. I see why people think that, but I mean, it was just sort of doing what we do, just sort of collaborating and, you know, yeah, bringing our influences to the table. And next thing you know, people are saying, yeah, this song kind of sounds like ACDC. Yeah. Oh, it sounds good to me. Yeah. I think like the vocals are like the, one of the main things that like people attach to yeah. the AC, ACDC. Like the brass and the... Yeah, like, I'm not sorry about it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. We'll take, we'll take and it. And how, power, <laughs> how powerful it is. It's yeah, a very yeah, like, yeah. powerful it's, track. Totally. It's a fun song, you know. Yeah. Um, for me, um, it's, it's actually a weird story. So I was new to the band, very, very new. Um, I think we jammed out one song and sort of did like a rough sort of demo of it. And obviously we need to keep going, we need to keep progress going. So I started feeling the pressure um, and I just like grabbed old lyrics that I had from a song that like never really landed. Like I was never really happy with what I did yeah. with those lyrics and I thought hopefully this goes well tonight. I think it might fit with that riff that they've been showing me. And I was like let's just give it a shot and I came in and it, it landed and it landed hard. And it was so exciting. It, it was really, really cool. Um, it, you know, four on the floor is, is four on the floor, but when you, when you have the magic of everybody really believing in it as well, like it really, I remember that night pretty clearly. Um, and I remember actually on the way there because I was so nervous because I literally grabbed the lyrics from the drawer in that bedroom. Yeah. <laughs> and I was just like, that's, I think that's going to work. And on the way in the car, I'm listening to it and I'm trying to make it fit. And when I got there and I was like, try, let's try it, guys. 
I was like overconfident because I was new to the band. I was new and, and it and it it's landed really cool. and we just I was it was just so exciting, you know, nice. that it that it went really, really well and I was like, Yes, another win, you know, it's just like ooh. I do have know. something to say. Um <laughs> I um I knew of her from this band The Hell and when I heard um her her stuff I was thinking that's we need somebody like that to front this band. We need something like that. Yeah. And again, going back to my short list, and she was on like you know top of it. And so you know when she came into the room and started uh, you know doing her thing, it's just it, you just know when something clicks. Like oh my god, this is the the missing piece of the puzzle. You know, it's very difficult to find really great musicians that really you gel with. And you know, it was a it was um, a relief to finally you know put that notion to rest. We found uh, the missing gem. Yeah. We started with like a very limited time together, but every time we got together, it was like, whoa. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Very <laughs> few times, oh, no, yeah, we got it. Yeah. <laughs> what are we doing? Yeah, because yeah. Right. Yeah, we were all busy, like, oh, let's try, and we don't expect much, but then we were all in the same room from the very first day, we knew that this this was getting somewhere. And well, and, and who, that's how we feel. I mean, yeah. we're hoping other people feel that way. But we feel that way. We all right? feel yeah. this way. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna yeah. Make music that way. It's great to hear these stories too because it's so funny when you work so hard at a band, right? Like you don't kind of look, take a step back and look at it, right? Like I had no idea about these, you know, how you felt about it, right? In the sense of like when you brought those lyrics to the song, right? Because when you look at it as a whole, right? Like when we're working, it's like yeah. it's hard to like take some time out to be like, so what did you really think of it? Like even as ourselves, yeah. right? Like we don't yeah. dive into yeah. this as much, right? So when you take a step back and you look at it, you're like, Oh yeah, that's how it came together, right? Yeah, like, 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 like I was. I had no I idea was, she had lyrics, and she's like, "I'm gonna grab these." I thought it was all yeah. written out, right? Yeah, like, no, I. I just, we're all learning things here. I, right. literally, <laughs> I, I literally grabbed them out of desperation, and I was nervous. It was not gonna work. Like, yeah, I was see? very nervous. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, for me, I guess because I, uh, my contribution to this song, because I heard it uh, much later in its kind of development stage, it was kind of already. Uh, a demo, I guess, for lack of a better word, because um, I think it was Dan, right? Is that the drummer's name? Dave. Uh, Dave. Yeah. Dave. And yeah. so Darren sent me a sample of that song, uh, the demo, and it was cut with another drummer. And I listened to it, and I'm like, man, like, well, that was so. One, I'm like, okay, so if I'm gonna show up and and audition for these guys, I'm gonna have to like super bring my A game, because like listening to him play drums, I'm like he reminded me of like the drummers that I was listening to, right? Like mm -hmm. in the song and I'm like, okay, so for me to like kind of like emulate that, like to bring that type of playing to it, I'm like, this is great. And then two, I'm just like, holy cow, like listening to all the parts together, I'm like, these guys sound like they've been playing for like years. Like, you know, they've developed these demos and I'm like, man, these are way better put together than any, you know, groups I've ever played, like, you know, you play with your friends, or you play with musicians, and you think, like, ooh, yeah, that was really fun. Yeah, yeah. this is great. I'll, I'll catch you later. This was a great jam. Uh, and, like, you know, I heard these guys, and I'm like, these guys must have been playing for a long time, because they've already got kind of a good sound already hashed out. They've got well-put-together songs. I think you sent me three demos, and I was listening, uh, and I was just like, wow, like, these are amazing. Like, to me, I thought these could already be out, right? Like, they must, how, they must have been a, playing forever. That's a really yeah. good question. Like, how, how long were we together before Aaron joined? Because I think it's just the fact that we just really work really hard and efficiently, like. That's what I Maybe thought. like yeah. a year. Yeah. Do you mind if I tell the, the story about how, um, you know, your audition? No, please, go ahead. <laughs> All right, this is, I don't, you know, this is, this is I have my perspective, but I want to hear yours. So, um, <laughs> before Aaron came along, we had, um, Another fellow that was jamming with us, really good guy, and he's a very skilled uh, musician, but he had to leave. And, you know, finding, you know, drummers is just again and again, trying to find musicians, it was just, it's very, very difficult. So I was like, ah, just pay somebody. Um, <laughs> I said, I, I put up an ad, and Aaron responded, and I'm thinking to myself, I'm giving this kid 20 minutes, if it doesn't go, uh, go well, oh, yeah, I'm probably going to leave. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I had low expectations. I had oh, low expectations. I'm thinking, oh, yeah. 20 yeah, minutes, start the timer. It's fair, it's fair. And then the first uh, run through of the song, and I believe it was in the wild, I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, let's give him 25 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> 25 minutes came along, oh, okay, maybe we can invite him to the next yeah. jam. And yeah. So it's, yeah. it's just really funny how like you, you're so like set on something, and then something else happens. And Well, in this case, something really good happened, and we got a drummer and a really nice guy. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
Darren, it, actually that story. So Darren had bugged me for a while. He sent me some demos before, and they were a little bit more acoustic. They were great, you know, but they, they didn't fire me up, you know. Um, and then all of a sudden, he sends me some electric stuff, and I'm like, oh, that's interesting. I was, and I was telling these guys tonight, I was like, uh, I don't even know if you'd heard this story or not before, but uh, I was like, oh, well, you know, I gotta get to work. I listened to like 60 seconds. Uh, that's actually really cool. Maybe I'll listen to it more later. So I start getting ready for work, looking for clothes. What am I gonna wear today? And the song will not stop playing in my head. All of a sudden, the lyrics start coming to me, and I'm like, what? And I was like, that's it, grab a pen. That's it, I'm gonna be late for work. And yeah. I started writing lyrics down, and I was like, oh man, now I'm gonna have to call this guy back. <laughs> I, <laughs> but but I'm, I'm really, it. really <laughs> happy. You, right? like, yeah, but I was so happy about it. I, I'm, I'm genuinely happy. I still remember the exact spot uh, uh, where I was when you said you were in. I remember, I remember correctly, I was like trying to run down, we got all these things going on, you know, we're gonna do this, we're gonna take over the world, and you're like, no, 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 I'm in, you don't have to sell me. <laughs> and I was like, what? Yeah. And then like butterflies literally felt that came from my heart. Aww. True story. And um, yeah. I was like, yeah, it, it did happen. And um, I was like so relieved because I knew, I don't want to sound too confident about this, but I knew when I heard her other band and I heard this uh, the singer with this magical voice, I'm like, this is the person that should be fronting this band. Yeah. That, yeah. And so when she said she was in, I, I just uh, breathed it up, breath it, breathe it, breathe, yeah. breathe, breath. We're breathe. still working on that. Dictionary. I was relieved because I knew that we found the gem. Yeah. We yeah. found totally somebody with that it factor. Well, I'm blushing. Now. <laughs> way too much praise. Yeah, yeah, it's too yeah. much. Yeah. yeah. No, this yeah. is awesome. Next it's question. really beautiful to hear about you guys coming together. What is one of you guys' favorite like memories from jamming so far? Oh, wow. That's a good question. Mm. The birthday party? Well, yeah, I guess, yeah, that, that story Sorry. definitely needs to be shared. So, um, <laughs> not too long after, I basically uh, met Darren online, then finally met him in person. We got along really well. And a couple of months went by, and it was my birthday. I had a few people over, and um, essentially, if you know me, you know what my birthday party would consist of, and that probably means spinning some records and maybe having some beverages, and we definitely did both. Just one or two beverages. Just one or two <laughs> beverages and records. But one thing I knew we would enjoy was the first uh, Flying Burrito Brothers record, which I just acquired on vinyl. Nice. So decided to put that on, and uh, Darren and I being in the kitchen and being big fans of the band, we started singing along to some of the songs, and then I started to realize, like, I know he's a good guitar player. And, you know, we were both between bands, and we both liked the same music, we thought, well, why aren't we doing something? And it was just this little molecule of an idea. And sure enough, as the month transpired, we started thinking like, well, what are we gonna do? How are we gonna find these people? What kind of band are we starting? You know, five years later, this is what you're getting. This is the final product. Well, and we've known each other for four or five months before this birthday party. We we're always talking about rock music and whatever. And we never thought, hey, let's form a band. We just never thought about this. But when I was at said birthday party, you know, again, one or two beverages, you know, uh, in moderation, responsible. being responsible. <laughs> well, I saw this goofy little grin on his face, and I knew what he was thinking. I guess almost I could see inside his head, like, let's start a band together. <laughs> and then I had that goofy little, I I had yeah, that yeah. Goofy little uh, smile, too, like I kind of do right now, see? And I was like, let's start a band together. <laughs> so it seemed like we were on the same page, and, you know. Like, I'm just seeing, like, a cartoon with, like, hearts above <laughs> <laughs> It was a bromance. You know, it really was. You know, they say the truth comes out, right? Yeah, yeah the truth yeah, definitely slipped out in the kitchen. <laughs> Yeah. So hang on a second though, did jam? you guys actually jam? Not that night. Not really. <laughs> that no, was the wow. question though, right? Like, no, uh, <laughs> yeah. this, this is a good story. Right? <laughs> I like the story. I love this, story. this leads to the jamming yeah. story. We're so. going around oh, yeah. right? Well, and we started jamming and then we realized that the interesting thing about me and Justin as guitar players is that we're actually quite different individually, but it's kind of like the peanut butter and jelly effect where it's like, I don't know which one is which, but when we come together, you know, it's got that natural, like we, when we work our guitar parts, you know, um, it's kind of effortless. So it's great, it's, it's very natural, it's not too much labor, which is great because it works out pretty fast. But what he has, I don't, and I like to think what I have, he doesn't, and it's just, um, it's just a good, it's a good fit. So with the first couple times jamming um, with him was great. Um, meeting Bill and hearing his, uh, his funky bass lines, you know, and just hearing him yeah. play, oh, yeah. I knew that this guy was the right fit. Plus he looks cool and that's really important. <laughs> <laughs> it was the hair, right? It was the hair. That was a yeah. solid yeah. right there. You hired. Yeah. Say we weren't going to talk about it here. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't a contract <laughs> before we started this interview. That's it. Yeah, I love your hair. I love your hair. It's okay. I'm just... So, but, um, you know... <laughs> 
And then, of course, you know, jamming with Lindsay that magical day when yes. everything just, you know, yes. and then uh, hearing Aaron play, it just all kind of, it took a while, but it all kind of just happened. And everybody, when they came into the picture and that first jam with said person, it was just, it was just a bunch of magical moments. Yeah. yeah. I don't know, I think my favorite jam was in the wild. Like, the how, how quickly was. that song just went. It, it was like, it happened and the structure was like done. Like in the first night, like I think we just had to fine tune stuff in pre-production like it was, yeah, it, was quick, it was really yeah. quick and and uh for me that was like wow yeah that, i was really blown away like goosebump level sort of you know especially because i felt like i pulled that out of my a you know <laughs> so, like, like yeah. the, the collective light bulb went a off drill. like if this is you know, <laughs> if this is so good so quickly we need to run with it and see yeah. how much further we can go uh, we had we had a couple chats before this interview about some of the behind the scenes stuff that you guys are going on it seems like you're really you're really working hard to make sure you got a proper plan you're not just kind of like you know throwing out in the wind <laughs> um, do you guys want to talk a little bit about how uh, how you guys come up with that as a team about your planning for how to release music as it's going to start coming up? Sure. Um, I guess I'll, I'll take that. Um, you know, I think we, we understand that, you know, the, the landscape is, has changed, you know, in terms of how people promote their music. Obviously, digital, social media, all of that stuff, it's become so much more important than it ever was. I mean, I think, you know, we're, we're all... What are we all? We're all in our 30s and our 40s in this band, right? Do I have? Am I right about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah right. Uh, That's right. Okay. <laughs> I'm really, really bad with birthdays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm terrible with birthdays. Um, I'm not good at all with that. So yeah, if I forget your birthday, I'm really sorry in advance. Um, but the the point is, is that we we understood that pretty early on. We knew, okay, we can make a great product, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to go anywhere. It's going to do what we want because we're in our 30s and our 40s. We don't have a ton of time to waste. We want to get it right. Um, that's not to say that we have it right right now, uh, but we're putting our best foot forward. So we've all been taking a, a lot of time to learn a lot about social media and sort of what's important really to to fans. Um, and we're hoping that we can learn, um, you know, and, and reach out to the kind of people that might like this music, but also we're hoping to get a lot of feedback from them so that we can continue to, to give what it, they may want on those platforms. Um, but we're never going to no, unless we hear. So I think our biggest thing is we're going to do a lot, um, but we'd love to do more. And the only way we're going to know how well that's received is if people get back to us. So I think the main thing is we just want people to let us know, you know, what you're thinking. And, you know, did you like that? Did you not like that? That's okay. Yeah. You know, well, we can do other things. Um, we just want to get really creative with it because it is a space that you can be creative. Um, it's one thing to make music, but it's a whole other thing to, to be able to um, to really be there for the fans. And yeah. I think that's something that we really were taking to be very important. Absolutely. So. Yeah, uh, one big thing too that uh, we've been missing for the last year and a half, but uh, you were talking about feedback with the music. Back, back when we had live music before everything shut down in this country, that was such an instant way to instantly see. Like, are people dancing? What's the reaction? What's going on? Yeah. With that? Um, which you guys haven't had with this band yet. Uh, but you guys, I'm sure, are going to be getting to some shows soon. Uh, what, are, what are some venues you guys are excited to get into? Good question. The well, Fillmore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. ACC. Yeah. The Fillmore. Um, yeah, I don't know, guys. Uh, I'd start with the Horseshoe. Yeah, I'm sure the Horseshoe is obviously a classic. Horseshoe to the Fillmore? Yeah. Horseshoe to the Fillmore. Wembley <laughs> Stadium. You know, uh, Danforth, right? That's obviously a classic too, right? Yeah. You get in there, that's, that's got some great shows, I think. Yeah, I think, I think with anything, it's just it's a matter of sort of you know, getting getting in venues where you think you're gonna draw. I, it's it's not really about the venue for me. It's about the bill. Yeah. Personally, um, I think. The event. You know, yeah, yeah, it's the event. It's you know, the bill needs to make sense. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's really easy to throw together a whole bunch of indie bands that don't actually make sense together. And I just. What I, are you from Toronto or something? <laughs> <laughs> you know, Been there, done that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I, it, to me, to me, it's like if you if you really want people to stick around and drink beer and not just leave after they saw their friend play, then make a bill that makes sense. People will drink all night. Yeah. You know, uh, to to me that's just obvious. And 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 some right. promoters and some bars do that really really well. Uh, some don't. And so yeah. I guess my answer is I want to play at those places. Well, let's talk about uh, let's talk, who are some other uh, who are some other local bands that you guys would like to play on a bill with. Oh, oh man! Wow. Mm. Well, I know um, some Ontario bands out there that I think would be stylistically a good fit. There's a band from Barrie called. 
Bigfoot's hands that uh, have a, a kind of old, like a 70s, 90s uh, sound. You might know who they are. Oh, I don't know them actually, but I okay. love that name. Well, there's another <laughs> band um, called Sweet and the Big Bad that also has a, a 70s kind of sound. Um, they're from the New Market Aurora area. I'm a fan of Kings and Queens. You know, yeah, um, uh, a little foot, long foot, like you know, like mm -hmm. bands like that in town, like fantastic, fantastic live, fantastic music. Um, I'm trying to think of other ones right now. It, it's really hard to tell who's still active right now after, <laughs> yeah, after, so after true. COVID. Like it's it's really hard to. We know. want to play with anyone, but is there anyone out there to play with? <laughs> who's like, right? you know, yeah. like. Yeah, but hey, you know, uh, I think I think it's it's just really about making sure, like I said, that it makes sense. And I think there's a lot of bands out there. But, you know, maybe there's something to that. Maybe these bands need to learn how to network better so that they can, you know, we all need to be better at saying, hey, like, I like what you're doing. We need to, like, go to yeah. a venue and tell them, like, we all want to play together and it's within your best interest to book all of us because yeah. we have fans and they'll stay all night yeah. and they'll buy beer, yeah. you know? <laughs> so, yeah. 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 No, and they'll like you guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think uh, I think that point you just touched on is so important, um, and maybe something that didn't happen as much pre-pandemic, but hopefully will post-pandemic is like Toronto bands really do need to work together. Yeah. Um, like if we're all gonna make this music scene work, I really think there's gonna have to be a lot more teamwork than there was in the uh, in the past. But it's not just Toronto. Like there's a yeah, lot of yeah, great not bands. Yeah, yeah, not just Toronto. Yeah, I'm, I'm talking area. about Toronto because that's where we are. I keep yeah. Right, 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 right. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's yeah. a lot of like you know great venues out of town. Well, I hope they're still there. Uh, <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of great uh, talented bands all over the place, and I think that we should all be working together. Or and whatever genre you play music in, you got to find your people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, people that have a very similar sound. Uh, you know, if you're a Toronto-based band, you know, try to find your London peeps, your St. Catharines peeps, your Hamilton peeps, people that you know um, have a bit of a local fan base, so that you can go over there, and there's already a little bit of a built-in crowd. And yeah. when they come over to Toronto, where, where we're at. That we can reciprocate, you know. So I think it's really important to, you know, have your um, your circle of people, you know, your circle yeah. of bands, Absolutely. your peers. Yeah, yeah we could we, we could work harder at making like genre communities. Mm -hmm. I don't know, like or something along those lines. I'm not sure if that's a great term or not, but you, you see what I'm getting with that, right? Definitely, yeah. Like, like, yeah. Like, just, just a little scene. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. A, scene, a scene a scene is just it could be anything. Yeah. Yeah. You but consider... your scene, you gotta find your <laughs> okay. people I mean, in your scene. You know what, yeah. at this point, I feel like it's like, if we just, you know, as as the music scene, or like, you know, as venues start opening up, it's like, once you start finding good bands, it's like, even if they might obviously not be totally in our genre, or in our, in our style, it's like, if they're good people, a good band, they can draw people, it's like, cool, like, let's hold on to them, right? Like, Let's try and help each other out, right? Like, obviously, you guys got a good fan base. You guys are great to work with. We've got a good fan base. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know, if they get along well with us, it's, like, great, you know? Like, hold on to those bands, right? Because I yeah. feel like, at least from my experience, you know, when if, uh, in previous bands, you know, long ago, if I was playing on a, on a bill and, you know, you found a really great band, it's like, oh, we should totally, like, do more shows together. This is great. You never hear from them again, right? Yeah. Like, you don't, you don't stay in touch. And then... Or, you know, you're like, oh, man, you guys are really great. And it's like, yeah, and they just, like, you know, blow you off. It's like this was a one-time thing, and they're out, and it's like, well, you know, that, that would have been great because, we you know, the crowd was really digging us both. We could have really made something out of that, right? Yeah. So I hope, you know, yeah, when fans find each other, yeah, you know, yeah. they get hold that on. connection, they hold on, right? And that, that'll help a lot, I think, right? Like, just re-rolling out music like so if there's any bands over. watching this later right. you guys want to connect and you happen to like us we're <laughs> super open totally yeah. we'll, we'll try it yeah. <laughs> uh, awesome yeah let's say uh, let, besides for yeah i'm sure you guys will be getting some live music as soon as you can uh besides for that what uh what's coming up what's the uh what's the future plans go for it oh, it's a good one <laughs> the future plans uh so uh obviously in the wilds released we're really excited about that um you know, we've, we, we've done a lot of work r rolling this out, and it, it's a great tune, but we have some more coming. So we're, we're really excited. We've got two more singles that we're going to be releasing soon, and, uh, you know, hopefully we can get back with you and talk with them about it again. You know, uh, we, we're, really, we're really just so excited that these tunes came out of, you know, really interesting time in, in all of our lives. Like, really, when you think about it, the entire world has been going through trauma. Um, these songs and, and, and the, some of them, uh, in the wild, it's more of like a, just get back down to, to business, you know, get back down to like just being with your partner and like get out, you know, 
and be in the wild, get down and be wild. That's really straightforward, straight Absolutely. rock and roll. <laughs> the other two songs coming up are a little bit more introspective in the sense that like, I think we've all been really evaluating like what it is that's important to us. And, and also it's really easy for things to get in your way when you're evaluating those things. And so there's some messages there that are coming out and I'm pretty excited about those messages. And I think as a band, we're all really excited to, to share that stuff. So. Definitely. Yeah, we're excited to play together, play live. Oh gosh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Keep making music, you know, writing songs. That's what I look forward to, you know. Yeah. And mm -hmm. and see where this is gonna get, like, because I have a good expectation of it. Too. I think a lot of us have uh, spent, you know, a fair time, a fair amount of time on stages and things like that, and for you know this pandemic to come in and basically take all of the uh, the live music away. I think all of us are very. We're ready to get back on those stages and do what we what we've been you know put here to do. And mm -hmm. once uh, we get everything lined up and all, all the venues start opening up and the bands start coming back out of the woodwork, I think we're gonna be right there with them. Yeah, we want to get loud. Yeah, like really loud. <laughs> if that's okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if that's okay. Yeah. We won't push it to eleven. But <laughs> we'll push yeah. it to ten now. If we're playing your grandmother's backyard, <laughs> we'll keep it chill. Yeah. But other than that, it's going up. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Cool, okay, uh, this one's gonna stem from my uh, conversation with you earlier, but uh, where do you see you guys yourself in five years? Um, that's a great question. Um, <laughs> Manager. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> world tour. Yeah, world, yeah, world nice tour. Nice one, yeah. Yes. I, manager yeah. is the best answer I've heard yeah, yeah. question in a long time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Junior yeah, manager. manager. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think it would be nice if we, in the, in the next, uh, over the next five years, if we can prove to ourselves that we're going to be uh, an international recording, touring band that is able to survive off our passion. That would be great. And if we work hard enough, I think we might be able to do it. That would be great. Absolutely. Yeah. I think we'd like to have an, at least an album under our belt, you know, and uh, maybe even two. Maybe even two. Maybe yeah. two. Five for sure, too, yeah. I think, yeah. Um, double albums. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> two double two albums. CDs. Two CDs. Two double albums, yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't, for, for me, I, I just, I would, I would really just like to be able to play, you know, consistently, play live consistently and, and make music consistently um, and, and be able to do it um, and not actually have to work a full time job. I think that's every musician's dream is to like actually be able to do it full time, yeah. to have that, that time. And I think we have the commitment and I think we have the drive that we would make that worth it. Um, we just have to keep keep working just as hard and I think we could probably have a good chance. That's it. I mean I, I believe in the music enough and as long as we stick to it, the music will prevail and I think ultimately we'll achieve our goal. So yeah. Yeah. we just want the people to know the way it sounds, right? Yeah. 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 You got like Somewhere there, they're like, oh, that's the latest way worse than sound. We know them. Yeah. 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 Oh, they're playing they're tonight. Like, they're, yeah. they're 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 trying. You know? So so, Bill, yeah. your 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 five year plan is just straight up brand recognition. Just, yeah. You know, like, yeah. Got, got it. Check. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, no, like I, I mean, yeah, like I I've, I've toured across Canada and to just uh, be able to take it. That much further right like as as this thing grows i'm sure you know opportunities will open up more so than you know in, in past experiences playing and doing yeah. stuff so i mean you know that's just uh you know i think about that because obviously that was a great experience so to do something even larger than that and stepping it up that's fantastic you know awesome here here we come uh New Zealand. Yeah. That would be great. Why not? Oh, Moose I've never been. Saskatchewan. There you go. Yeah. Uh, alert. Right. You know, it takes about like the same that, time, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it would take us about the same time to get to northern Canada as it would to go around to right. Auckland. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Wicked. Okay, uh, I'm going to wrap it up here. I've got one last question for you guys. If you guys had any uh, last messages to share with anybody watching, what would that be? Thank you very much for listening to us. Hopefully um, you enjoy what you heard. And uh, we would like to write more great music for you to entertain you and to touch your heart. Uh, right. I think I want to say um, I use Pantene. So <laughs> Pantene if you want to get oh, at me. More with the hair stuff. <laughs> 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 oh jeez! Uh, look at me now, Mom. I'm with yeah. this riffraff. No, I'm just, uh, no, that's not what I want to say. But, uh, but 
I don't know. I just, I, I'm just, I'm really grateful for for you taking the time and being interested in us, and uh, and for any of you guys watching. If you made it to the end of this interview, amazing. Thank you for for finding us interesting, and hopefully you can continue to find us interesting. Yeah. 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 You you know if you hear our music and you know you like us like we want to. I think for me, I'm always the type of person that wants to be really personable. You know, I like talking to people. Like, the one thing I miss, especially about playing live music, is obviously like seeing people face to face and yeah. just chatting, right? Like, you know, I've had, I've told these guys, I've had people come up to me and be like, man, you're so great and I love, you know, the music you're playing. And, and I'm like, great, come on over and we'll, you know, chat and whatever. And I've had people come up to me and be like, you are terrible. <laughs> you are like not a good musician. And I'm like, Cool, man. Well, come on over. Let's talk. About it. Like, I don't, to me, it doesn't yeah. matter. Right? I just want to talk to people and hang, you know, hang out and and you know. So if you love it, then then let us know. That's all. And if you don't, let us know. And let yeah, we don't let us know too. Like that's cool. We're cool. Yeah. yeah. As long as you're around, right? Yeah, exactly. That's what I mean. Just know you're that you're up. Just know that you're wrong <laughs> by saying that. <laughs> we love you guys anyway. Your opinions. Will <laughs>